Hey, I'm Alex. This is my uh, 2020 Power Wagon. Wanted to go ahead and give a quick walk around and walk through of the accessories I've added to uh, help bolster some of its off-road capability as well as some uh, creature comforts for camping. So starting off, the uh, first thing I added was this Diamondback HD bed cover. Uh, nice thing about this one is the HD allows a 1,600-pound um, payload on top of it, uh, which is really good. I wanted the extra payload thinking that I would wind up doing this rooftop tent here. And then after doing that, uh, I added the Front Runner 3 bar load bar system, also offered through Diamondback, but made by Front Runner, but uh, designed specifically for the Diamondback HD or SE. So it comes with uh, these rails here that you can measure out and then drill into the bed cover, which might be a little daunting. I did spend probably more time than I should measuring three, four times before I started drilling, um, but they're really firm. I mean, this, this these suckers hold really well. Um, so I got those on there. And uh, without the rooftop tent, these do still allow the panels to function uh, like they normally would with the Diamondback HD. Um, then just recently, and this is actually her maiden voyage, added the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0 rooftop tent. Uh, sleeps for two adults, kids, two adults and two kids comfortably. Uh, comes with a 1.6 inch mattress in it that is a little firm. So we did, my wife and I did add a two inch uh, memory foam mattress to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, so the nice thing too with the eye camper and that three bar load bar system is that three bar load bar system sits low enough so that when the eye camper is closed, it essentially sits just below the cab on the back to help avoid a lot of the air drag as opposed to if you have it on top of the vehicle. Um, but it still sits high enough that you can load gear um, between the bed cover and the bottom of the eye camper. So that's been something really nice. Uh, moving on from that, um, I also added the white knuckle off-road uh, rock sliders. Um, just to help protect the uh, pinch welds when off-roading, and they've come in handy a few times so far. Hoping to get a lot more use out of them, too. Um, I did add the diamond top plate on the back um, as an easy step point and access point to mess around with stuff on the tent, um, which has been really helpful. All right, moving along to the front. Uh, one of the most recent ads is the Randy Ellis uh, light bar and the uh, KC Flex Era 4s that were just recently released. Uh, for these, I went with two combo beams, one on each outside, and two spot beams here in the middle. Uh, and then for power control module perspective, um, actually took Trail Recon's advice, and uh, went with the S-Pod Bantam uh, power control module. We'll pop the hood real quick and take a look at this guy. If I can find the hood latch. So right here, and she's got some mud on her from being out here in the woods. Simple thumb screw to remove the cover. And then all of the wiring from all the lights. I uh, made my own custom wiring harnesses here to keep it clean, but um, they all wire cleanly to switches here. And then just one ethernet cable that runs into the cab. Uh, makes it really easy to uh, add accessories later on without having to go back through the firewall for the truck. So this has been a very convenient way to hook up these lights. Um, and for anyone thinking about doing the Randy Ellis light bar, there's a couple niche points for <laughs> install that aren't quite advertised on the install instructions. And that's, um, you will have to remove, it says you'll have to remove your tow hooks. You don't actually have to remove both. What I did is I got underneath um, remove the bolts it tells you to remove, took out one tow hook, and with one tow hook removed, you can actually wiggle it in around the other into place and then bolt it up. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for the accessories. Show me the switch, where you mounted the switch. Oh yeah, good point. And then for the switch controller, I have the uh, S-Pod HD. Um, that I removed this trim piece actually, and then custom drilled out the holes and everything to run the wiring um, to keep it really clean. I didn't want to drill into the floor or into any other locations, and this also hides the wire. And if I decide to change this eventually, I can pull out that trim piece, replace it pretty simply, put a new one on, and it'll look like nothing was over there.